Hey all. So at work I have a third monitor. Since everyone else in my work has two monitors, my third monitor is just an old Samsung 191T. It's a, a 4x3 monitor. Um, and I uh, basically fished it out of the e-waste pile. Unfortunately, after a few weeks of use, I realized that the reason it was in the e-waste pile is that it has a problem. Um, after a while, it, it seems to uh, turn on and off. Um, now, I played around with it, um, went into the menus, did the brightness up and down. I noticed that when I increased brightness and the display turned off, even though I was pressing the button to increase it, when the display came back, it hadn't actually increased in brightness. So to me, that um, that means that the logic board is losing power. Now, I didn't want to bring the whole monitor home because it's an older monitor. It's really uh, quite heavy, and I don't like taking uh, big obvious things out of work that might make other people wonder what I'm doing. <laughs> so I took it apart really quick and just brought home the circuit boards. Um, so as you can see here on the left hand side is the logic board. Um, it does have uh, one capacitor as you can see but it's a nice high quality Sanyo. Um, you can see the the wiring there that's what actually goes to the monitor and these are the I guess low voltage differential pairs. So I'm guessing that this is okay because there isn't any like visual problems when the monitor works it just turns off. So I did um, look online and I found this really nice manual. It's awesome. And I was going to make a video going through it. There's, uh, there's like waveforms that you can, you can do and, uh, waveform. Here we go. So yeah, there's a bunch of waveforms you can, you can check and everything else. Um, and I was totally going to do that until on the way home, um, at a light, I was looking at the circuit board and I noticed that the brand on these capacitors, Capscon or I've never really heard how to pronounce them correctly. Everyone that um, talks about these caps in forums just calls them craps on um, because they're they're well known for uh, for failing. Now none of mine have uh, blown their lids or or launched off the board. That one there's a little high, but I think it was that way from the factory. So I was like, well, maybe you know what? Maybe I'll just replace these caps first. Um, now I was wondering which caps I needed to replace, and obviously you can see these coils here for the DC-DC converter for the inverters. Um, if you flip over the board, you can kind of see where that isolation slot is right there. Yeah. That isolation slot right there, you can kind of see that... Don't worry, this has been powered down for a while and I've shorted out the, uh, the capacitors. Um, this line here is kind of showing that, that everything up here is for the, uh, the really high voltage uh, uh, driver for the uh, fluorescent tubes and there's just some crossovers like this here is uh, a wire on the other side so I don't think any of the capacitors on that side are, are to, to worry about like these two here are probably fine if there's gonna be a problem with the power supply I'm guessing it's gonna be either these 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 two which probably not but maybe and probably maybe this guy here um, you'll see he's loose. Uh, I had to bend him up in order to read the uh, the values. The things you want to check when um, getting replacement capacitors is the capacitance value, which, you know, it's somewhat critical. You want to get, you know, within a certain percent. Um, I was able to find values that perfectly matched, but, you know, even going 20% over probably wouldn't be the end of the world. Um, you want to make sure you get uh, temperature, uh, equal, equal or greater temperature. These are all 105C which means they're designed to operate up to that. Um, if you get higher temperature caps, it, it's just better. It's fine. Uh, it's not going to hurt anything. You want to look at the equivalent series resistance or the ESR. So I did look at the data sheets for all these. Um, since I was replacing all these caps cons uh, with, with brands I recognize like Rubicon and, or Panasonic, ESR is probably not going to be a problem. And it wasn't. I, I checked. And in every case, the Rubicons and the Nichicons, everything else was lower ESR. For the exact same, you know, 105 temperature, you know, this one here's a thousand UF. Um, but you know, where the ESR can be confusing too, these two capacitors here are both a thousand UF, um, 25 volt, and these two are a thousand UF, uh, 10 volt. And but these have a lower uh, ESR than uh, than these two, um, so you might be tempted to just buy four of the same. But when I checked the uh, Rubicons that I purchased for these two. Um, the ESR for the 25 volt is actually a little bit higher than the ESR for these two 10 volts. So I ended up getting, um, you know, two, two different values. I got the 25 volt and the 10 volt. 
Um, oh, that's the other thing too is you know if you get a higher voltage rated cap, that that's fine as well. You can you can put a 25 in for a 10 or or 50 in for a 25. It's it's fine. It's just kind of how much you know you can think of it as how much kind of like the temperature, how much abuse the cap's gonna gonna be able to take. So if you put in a 50 volt, we're we really need a 25. Um, that could help. So through the magic of YouTube, um, I ordered uh, replacement caps on DigiKey. It was uh, about 10 bucks. 20% of that was, was shipping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and unsolder these old uh, capacitors and solder in the new ones. Here's the DigiKey package and here's our components. Uh, when I ordered the components, I did uh, make sure to include customer reference, the values on the board. So this is C108. 107, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if we look at the board, you can see nice enough to label the uh, capacitor values, even the ones that aren't uh, populated there, like C114. So that'll make it really easy. I don't have to uh, really even look. I can just uh, unsolder all the caps at once and solder all the new ones on. And as long as I don't open the bags, um, I can't get anything wrong, right? Um, the other nice thing Samsung does uh, label the negative for the capacitor. So you can see there on, on the unpopulated C114 that there's a black uh, stripe there indicating the uh, negative. And you can see, you can kind of see it like bleeding under the edge there of, of that cap there. There's even like a little uh, lip that comes out. Um, so you can see it after the component's mounted. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and unsolder those now. And here's a couple uh, shots of that happening. Oh, there's a shot of all the capacitors removed. Um, there's two series of capacitors that were in this particular Samsung. Um, there's the KM series that are black and the GL series, which are uh, brown. Um, I didn't, I don't recall from the data sheet, but likely it's just a uh, uh, different uh, like ESR uh, classes or something like that. Um, so what I'm going to do now is, uh, since we have these out, I'm going to test them with an LCR meter. We don't really need to do this step since we're replacing all the capacitors anyways, but it'll be nice to see if our guess was right. Um, I won't know if I've actually fixed this until I put it all together. And since it only happened uh, after the monitor heated up, uh, this test might not show the, uh, the failure anyways. Um, my LCR meter unfortunately does not do uh, ESR. Um, so I'll just be checking the, uh, the values of these capacitors. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm hoping that one of them is just a, a dead short and will be super obvious. So uh, I'm going to do the big capacitor last. Uh, and we'll, uh, I guess we'll start off with uh, one of the smaller values. Well, let's go ahead and uh, solder in our new capacitors. And I will uh, take this board back to work and uh, see if that fixes it. All right, so there's the board with uh, all new caps on. We've got the uh, nice big Rubicon uh, cap here. And uh, you'll notice that all my caps are flapping in the breeze now because I, uh, I broke this elastic. I don't have anything equivalent to that. I could put hot glue in here, but then it might start to uh, release a hot glue smell when the caps get hot. So I'm just gonna leave them loose. I'm not planning on moving this monitor too much. And uh, here's my Nichion capacitors there. And I thought I had a Panasonic in here, but I think I ended up uh, paying an extra two cents and just getting another Nichicon. just so I, uh, you know, capacitors all kind of went in the same way. Um, so what worked really well here, the, uh, the part numbers on the bags was just freaking awesome. Uh, things I would do differently uh, if I did it again, um, I would probably use solder braid, which I hate solder braid, or maybe my solder sucker, um, and uh, clean all the uh, the holes out before I uh, tried to stick the new capacitors in. There were several where I uh, I had to heat up the pad to get the, the foot in, um, and that was kind of a pain. Um, but yeah, other than that, look, looking pretty good. Um, I'll do a quick smoke test. Uh, Mainly because I don't want it to smoke at work. Um, people would freak, freak the freak out. So we'll take it over here where I'm closer to my emergency uh, fire area. I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring this into work and I'll update you guys and let you know if uh, this repair actually fixed it or not.